Hi, welcome back. Uh, remember last time we began talking about software? Well, today we're going to be talking about some of that specialized software that I mentioned last time, right? And my colleagues mentioned. So uh, we're going to try to focus on the little, on, on some specialized software that is specialized, but not as specialized as that one that actually makes the M&M uh, chocolates, okay? So let's get started. So we're talking about specialized applications, right? So it's software, it's application software, but this one is specialized. And in this case, you know, we have uh, two kinds in here. We have the graphics programs and the web authoring programs. However, right, from this part, here is what's gonna happen. I will begin talking about graphics, right? And in here uh, today, I will be talking about uh, programs that I widely used in graphic arts, but I'm going to be talking about the first two ones in here, desktop publishing programs and image editing programs. Then my colleague Mike uh, is going to be talking about the other two, okay? So that way uh, you can get to know a little bit more about everything that is going on, okay? So let's begin then with our desktop publishing programs. Okay, and let's take a look at what is their focus because remember these ones are specialized. So they actually focus on page design and layout. And yes, there is a science behind that because depending on how you lay something out, it can or may not get the attention of your target audience. Now, another thing that these kind of programs uh, allow you to do is that they allow artists to actually be artistic because they are able to actually combine text and graphics. So why desktop publishing programs? Okay, it sounds desktop publishing is like I am publishing that at my desktop. And the truth is that that's exactly what it is. In the past, remember in our previous session, I was talking about our life before computers and then, or at least before they were so prevalent, right? And nowadays, how, how things have changed? Well, things have changed in regards to desktop publishing because before you will have a kind of do something, write it, just kind of draw it and take it to somebody, to an artist that will actually do the real thing, uh, you know, like a, like a sample that you will then, it will come back to you, you will revise and then you will actually take it to the printer. Even if they were like just half a page or one page black and white kind of printing, you actually had to take it to the printer. And I have to tell you, and probably this I'm gonna show my age, but when I was in high school, I was the editor for the high school newspaper. Actually, I thought I was going to be a writer. Good, I changed. <laughs> but uh, when, I was, when I was doing that, actually I used to get all my stuff and I will have to deal with the printer. Nowadays, I will not have to do that. But I remember visiting the printer and the guy will get whatever you know, articles we give him and he will have to put letter by letter into a machine, you know, like, like Gutenberg, I guess, like putting letter by letter and then doing the pressing, you know, and, and publishing our newspaper. So it was quite an involved process. In order for me to be able to deliver a newspaper at, in high school, it will have to be at least a couple of weeks in advance when I will take that to the printer, do my editing, then take it to the printer, you know, tell him exactly the layout of the pages, which I had to do in advance also. And then he will have to tell me if it was okay. And nowadays, if I had just the desktop publishing program, I would have done it right up in there, you know, and the editing and everything. Another thing that I want to mention is that when I was in college, I had a friend that actually worked as an editor in a newspaper, okay? And I am not talking about the editor, like the one that says, this article goes, this one doesn't go. No, a real editor, a person that was actually looking and trying to find typos and grammar errors. That was her job. So nowadays she will not have a job because now we have everything is sort of automated, right? So things are easier, but yet uh, difficult in a different way. Okay, let's continue. So with uh, this, as I mentioned, you know, you can now you can make newsletters, newspapers, that will be like what I was doing. Now you can make brochures like to encourage students to study computer science, and you can even actually make textbooks, okay? Now there is one thing that we need to look at, okay? There are certain elements in the desktop, in desktop programming that, um, 
They come from very many different sources. That is kind of the cool thing about it, okay? Look at this, whenever you're putting something together, you may get something from your scanner or your camera. That's pretty good. You know, you will think like, yeah, where else can I get stuff? Well, you can get it from an image editor because perhaps something that came up from your camera needed some fixing, okay? Or from an illustration program. Another source, it could be an image gallery, okay? So here is the thing. I want you to look at a desktop publishing program as if it was a modern scrapbook, okay? You have that page and then you can grab elements from different places and you can modify them, give them depth, change the color, the perception, the angle. So it is quite a thing for artists, right? But keep in mind that behind every artist that is doing such great work, and that includes Pixar when they are making great movies, you know, there is always a software programmer that is behind them making the software so that they can do all those things. So don't just think that, again, let's not go into that thing that we call the invisible software. Software does exist and somebody else, somebody has to program. And for that is that we have computer scientists. Okay, let's continue. Well, as I was mentioning, right, one of the things that we use the most, mostly in those things, are images. Okay, and an image is composed of pixels. And this is an image of my dog. And I really like this image because I really like my dog. I just had to put my dog in there, okay? And uh, images are composed of pixels. So we have different kinds of images, but the most important thing that I want you to know in here is that pixels are little dots uh, that make up the picture, okay? So the way that that works, is that every little dot has a particular color and every single dot is composed of three different values of red, green, and blue. So those three values are mixed in there and they make that particular color for that particular bit. Okay, that particular pixel, I'm sorry. So uh, whenever we are thinking of creating a color in computer science, there is always those three values, red, green and blue, and the mixes of those are the ones that can make anything that you actually see on your screen. That's kind of cool, right? Let's continue. So because we have images and we're not always happy with them, I am happy with my dog image, but maybe not with other images, we have image editors, okay? And these editors will allow us to modify or edit photographs, okay? Here are some of the things that you can actually do when you have an image editor, okay? It can remove the red eye. That's awesome because when we didn't have this kind of technology, I had a lot of red eyes left and right, you know? It can fix scratches in photographs, which is kind of cool because you can get really old photographs and you can scan them and you can make them look like new. You can find these services some places nowadays. You can modify the contrast of a, a picture and you can also make it sharper, okay? So image editors have actually given, give a new, a new perspective to life because sometimes the images are so real that we think that they are right, that they are exactly the way that they are, but they are not. Okay, and very good examples of this are pictures of models where we think like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And then you see them without makeup and without Photoshop. Just forget it, the makeup, leave the makeup on, but you see them without Photoshop and it's a totally different perspective. So beware of what you see because you may think that it's real, but it's not. Okay, let's continue. So I am gonna give you a few examples of image editors. We have Adobe Photoshop, which actually there is some courses in digital media here where you can learn that. We have Windows Live Photo Gallery, Corel, Paint Shop Pro, oh, I remember this one, was one of the first ones. And we have the free one, GIMP, okay? And GIMP is actually free and you can download it. Now, the only issue with GIMP is that it's free, yeah, but it's uh, also the user interface. Remember that we talk about that? It's a little hard to use, so it has a steep learning curve. But I encourage you to modify your pictures. Now, if you are not happy with one, you know, if you're not happy with the selfie, you take another. But if you kind of like one, but it has the red eye, you know how to find it. And the great thing is that nowadays, even cell phones have a way to actually edit your pictures right in there. Aren't we lucky?